reminds me of what a mistake, even though it was a budget decision, um, what a mistake cutting arts and music from public education. I think I voted against that. Yeah. <laughs> and I also want to add that I, I think when we cut the programs in the elementary schools, and I know we've seen, I guess I'll call it the trickle up effect, where it's difficult now for us to build back the middle school band program, and then what's going to happen to the high school band program. And if we don't have the feeder program in the elementary schools, then that, that entire program basically disappears. And um, I forget the name of your music teacher, but as she talked about, a relative of hers who is you know, now playing in, in a Philharmonic Orchestra, I think she said in Nebraska or Kansas. These kids don't have that opportunity. A lot of them aren't gonna get it outside of the school um, setting. And this is where it starts. So I think we really need to keep our, our focus on providing a well-rounded education. And just as an aside, Patrick Whitka, who was the student rep tonight, he's dedicated uh, most of his extracurricular activities for four years to the arts. And, uh, Patrick was a, an active member of the Mascus for four years, put on some unbelievable productions at the high school, including uh, Singing in the Rain this year. He also helped found, and as we talked about the a cappella group, but uh, we had an opportunity to see them and hear, uh, hear them last year at Steve Jervie's retirement, and they're unbelievable. So I think that um, it was just kind of coincidental that Patrick, who was our student rep tonight, has done so much, uh, contributed so much to the arts at the high school, and that we have that presentation tonight, too. So. So it's always a balancing act when we're trying to put a budget together and we're short on funds. Um, something has to go. And um, last year, programs suffered the cuts. Um, you know, the alternative is larger classroom sizes. So I'm sure somebody could make an argument for maintaining small classroom sizes. Um, but I'm very pleased that we were able to restore those programs. And it, it's been evident in every school that we've visited how much the children just enjoy um, and I think every child should have an opportunity to perform at some point in their education. So, thank you very much. Thank you to thank your you. staff. Um, did anyone on the council? I think, it, you know, the thing that we all appreciate here, and I'm sure you appreciate out there, is that art and music are an integral part, like athletics, an integral part of educating the whole child. And we have to do the whole child, not just part. It's in the Massachusetts Constitution that we educate the whole child. And we will continue to fight for that. Absolutely. Yeah. And as a new member of, of the school committee, the arts and music are very important to me. I almost went to conservatory out of high school. And it was because of the music and arts programs that I got to that point. I sang in a cappella through college. And it was one of the things that, that motivated me. And so, uh, you know, th that type of enrichment really is, is not really enrichment, it should be part of, of the, the overall education of, of a person. Because those are the things I think that make students come to school if they can't find something else in, that excites them about the curriculum, music and art tend to do that. I wasn't a sports person and I'm sure there are lots of students who don't go in that direction. And we can't just maintain that. So that's gonna be a huge priority for me. So thank you. Anyone from the school council want to make a comment or all set? Thank you. Well, thank you for serving on the school council. And every time I see Marcy, I think, what is the hood parent doing here tonight? And I forget <laughs> that we redistricted yeah, we re years ago. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, next on the agenda is the school calendar. Um, we have yet another revision. So oh, we've approved this a couple times already. We have. This is chair, Madam Chair. <laughs> David, what's up tonight? Right. Um, I think he's going to sneak that the early oh, break. They start in here. He is. Oh, he's so that's I'm, he's, I'm beyond. I think somebody else shut him down. He's <laughs> watching. I'm beyond that. Um, at our at our meeting in um, in April, we did vote on a school calendar that. As students start um, on the traditional Wednesday following Labor Day, uh, which this year, as you know, is about as late as it can be for the start of school, which is September 9th. Uh, but in the former uh, approved calendar, we had our staff begin school on Wednesday, September 2nd and 3rd. And then uh, staff would be off on the 8th. But in terms of uh, some contract language uh, and the start of uh, the school year, um, it, I'm bringing back, uh, uh, again, a very traditional school start 
where all of the staff, just not just teachers, but paraprofessionals, will begin on Tuesday, um, September 8th. And then students, again, there's no change on the start of the school year for students. It will be on Wednesday uh, after Labor Day on, on September 9th. Um, however, because we have reduced the number of student days from 182 this year, and will continue next year to 180 days, the teacher work year is still set at 183 days. So one of those days will, those teacher work days, um, professional development days, staff days, will be on September 8th, um, if you approve this calendar. The second one, which is a change, is to um, have a professional, teacher professional development day on Friday, October 9th. Now, that is the start of the, there's, that's the Columbus Day weekend. There is no school on October 12th. So what, if you approve this calendar, we will be um, having a, a no school day for students on Friday, October 9th. It will be a, a teacher uh, work day, teacher professional development day. Uh, there's a number, there are many um, programs that we need to train our teachers on and we need to do that early in the start of the school year. So I'm recommending that that be on Friday, October 9th. So that is a change for students because it, it will not be a school day for students. Um, we're, as you know, we're not having any early release days K to 12. There are early release days built in for conferences and for uh, at the high school for exams. But the other uh, professional development day for teachers will be on Wednesday, May 5th. And much of that work is built around the um, uh, the formation of classes for the and the schedules for the for the coming year. So we'll have one professional development day on October 9th and another one on May 5th. Now, the disadvantage with all of this, of course, is that it um, puts with five snow days and 180 student days, you must schedule five snow days, it brings the tentative last day of school if we had all five snow days, highly unlikely, I have to say, um, to Wednesday, June 30th. That's good. We know you won't schedule those snow days. Though. I'll work at it. <laughs> so this, I, I'm hoping that I, I'm going to guarantee that this is it. This is the last time the day is voting on this calendar for 09010. It, it makes no change uh, for the start of the school year for parents and students. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> Smile at the camera and say that. Yeah. The best you can do is get us out June 30th. Well, that's right. Five days earlier than that. Yeah. Warren, can I ask a question? Sure. Or, um, David, I don't know if we, um, the first time we voted on the calendar, we clarified that there will be another, I guess, subtle change with the start of school and that we're not going to have that um, first day where only the freshmen go, and then that's changing this year, correct? Right, it has to, and you, you actually included that and mentioned it the last time, the previous time when you voted the calendar. Because we're down to 180 days, which is the minimum uh, state requirement, uh, we cannot, we must have all students be in session for 180 days. In the past, with 182 days, uh, at the middle school, we could bring in our sixth graders for that first day, and at the high school, have only our freshmen. But uh, this year, if moving forward with 180 days, uh, and so late in the year, uh, with the start of school, that all students in grades one to 12 will begin on Wednesday, and it will be a full day. Um, and our kindergarten, children and our pre-kindergarten uh, pre children uh, for the first two days, the 9th and the 10th of September, will follow the traditional one-on-one -on -one orientation with their teacher. Uh, and the first day for um, 
uh, for classes for kindergarten and for pre-K once the orientation sessions are over will be Friday, September 11th. Any other questions on the calendar? Can I have a vote to approve? Move to approve. Second. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Moving right along to our favorite discussion, next year's budget. Mm -hmm. David's got some recommended maneuver call, <laughs> to close the budget gap, which currently stands at seven hundred and seventeen thousand. Rounding up. David, you want to outline where we're at and how you propose we close the gap? I uh, probably direct the uh, school committee's attention to the handout that um, is titled North Reading Public Schools Saving Proposal and it is um, it's dated uh, today 5-11-09 and I, I what I when you look at this uh, sheet this is a recap of all of the work that has uh, happened in the development of the budget but uh, keep in mind that um, we're very late in not only voting on a school committee recommended budget, but the action of town meeting, which is scheduled for June 8, is about the latest that it's been in, in North Reading. And uh, it's quite possible that even though we get through June 8, that based on some of the changes that are happening at the state level, that we may have to come back at some point and re-vote a number. Um, if you've been following uh, the news, there, is, uh, there are tremendous changes in terms of not just next year's budget, but actually the FY09 budget, the present budget. Um, all superintendents uh, and town managers were notified last week, Friday, that due to the continued shortfalls in the FY09 budget, there will be a decrease in Chapter 70 funding. Now, Chapter 70 funding is the school aid. Um, up to this point, there has been no decrease in Chapter 70 funding in FY09 or for FY10. However, the, um, the revenues coming into the state require a recalculation. Now, what is being proposed here is that school districts will be held harmless on that reduction in Chapter 70 money. My understanding is that we will be notified of the dollar value for the decrease in Chapter 70 money, but that we will then apply, be asked to apply to the stimulus, federal stimulus grant, the Amer ARRA, American Recovery and Reinvestment Act stimulus money. It'll be an application. And so all cities and towns with a decrease in Chapter 70 will receive this application. This is for FY09. Mm -hmm. And those applications will be due on May 22nd. Uh, we're assured that it will be a streamlined process, but the money then will be shifted from the stimulus money to make up for the drop in Chapter 7. However, there will be a deduction from the overall stimulus money available. Now, as of Friday, I do not believe that that decrease will have a negative impact on North Reading, at least for FY10. Remember that our money for F from the stimulus money, um, some of it is being used. About 853000 is targeted toward bringing North Reading education up to foundation level. And there's been discussion about whether that is FY10 only or FY11. And I think some of the information that's 